Rob Ratton, everybody. Rob, come on up. How are y'all doing? So, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm a lawyer, so I have no real frame of reference in life outside of my work, which is, you know, someone invented charging by the hour, so therefore they just keep us chained to a desk. So, of course, that's what all my stories will have to do with. And if you want to flash back about 10 years ago, Memphis, as a municipality, came up with a very very good decision to try to reorient the landscape. And we decided to get rid of all of the Confederate monuments around town. Do y'all remember that? One of the, I mean, those, I never got those monuments. I mean, there was nothing more embarrassing than having in Medical Center Park when you're having people from all over the world come in. They're like, oh, who's that guy on the horse? You're a like, slave trader. You know, like, no, you want to invest here. Stick around. So I was at Static. I was in the legal department of the city of Memphis. We're getting rid of the monuments. We're doing the research for the First Amendment stuff. And uh, we did a phone call. And not everyone shared our enthusiasm. There was a social club outside that was founded. Uh, this group was living in North Carolina. But they were founded down the street, Pulaski, Tennessee, the Ku Klux Klan. And they called. And they said, hey, you know, you can't, we're going to protest those monuments. And so the city attorney's office gets involved. I get called in, and we have an emergency meeting. Just, and we have to figure out who's going to represent the city, who's going to be the legal liaison for the city of Memphis in this, uh, for this KKK rally that's coming. And no one wants it. But as luck would have it, I was the only white attorney that wasn't in court that day and wasn't there for the meeting. And Herman Morris, our city attorney, looked around the room and was like, Rob! You get to represent the city in front of the, the you know, you get to represent the city. It's like, first thing you have to do is you have to go tell the city council um, that the First Amendment requires us to have it. And that we're going to have to spend like a quarter of a million to $500,000 to put on this, to defend this rally. And I'm like, okay, that, that should be fun. So we spend, um, I have to call the folks. They kind of like, you know, their theory of, uh, of what a city should be kind of eviscerates all the joy. You know, it's like, let's take gays, Jews, African Americans of the city, therefore you'd be left with nothing worthwhile in Memphis. So I was kind of like, it's gonna be hard for me to get on board with y'all, but uh, but you know I'm an attorney. I can be uh, I can be objective and, and uh, do what I got to do. So um, we me and like the, the, with the time as director Tony Armstrong, all these people, we set up this huge plan for uh, for how we're gonna do it because you know meanwhile the clan's saying they're coming, they're gonna bring thousands. And then, you know, people are saying, but the games are going to come, and they're going to get, like, everyone's freaked out, and no one knows what's going on. So we basically turned downtown Memphis into a demilitarized zone. And so I'm driving down there. It's a rainy day, and I get there late, and the place where I'm supposed to park is full. And so I pull up in this lot, and I'm looking at all the license plates. I'm like, I don't recognize any of these cars. I'm like, it's all North Carolina plates. And I'm like, oh, shit, I parked in the Klan lot. I'm like, that's not good. I don't want to be in the Klan lot. And I get out, and the craziest looking, methed out white guy is standing there looking at me and saying, like, yeah. And he's like, and he's wearing a trench coat, and I see him conceal a gas mask. And he walks up to me, he's like, you ready? I'm like, oh yeah. He's like, you ready? We're going to fuck some shit up. And he just goes charging off down the street. And I'm like, ha. Ah. So I walk over, and I'm like, hi, officer. My name is Rob Ratton. He's like, how are you doing today? I was like, uh, I'm good. You see that guy in the trench coat with the gas mask? He said he was looking to fuck some shit up. I didn't know if this was the type of information you'd be curious in. I've never seen a human rodeo before. I've never seen this experience of watching. So they floored in their car, they cut him off, and that's thing I know, I'm being escorted into this, uh, this like compound SWAT unit, and he's on the floor zip-tied going, I thought you were my friend! I thought we were in on this together! And I'm like, no, why? Why? It's just because we're white. This is so unfair, you racist. Um, <laughs> you are you're judging me. So we, uh, the, the rally gets started, and I don't have any idea what's coming on. I mean, I have no idea what's happening, um, but I'm expecting this, you know, the, the, the white knights, Ku Klux Klan, coming out in force. So the doors to the, lot, the court open, and they start streaming out, and it is 45 of the most pathetic, overweight, you know, like the people and like citizens of Walmart that you've ever seen in your life. The, the parade, the procession gets held up because they, one of them can't get their lighter to work. When he's walking out the door, he stops. He's like, hold on, I haven't had a smoke in a while. And he's like lighting his cigarette. And so they finally get out onto the pavilion and it's like 45 pictures of pre-diabetes just standing there staring at us. And about 
A hundred yards away, there are a bunch of other people standing down at the other end who are protesting. And you can hear the protesters cheering, and you can hear them. Um, and I, I did, me and this guy, uh, Zaid Salim, who is the uh, MPA legal advisor, we're the only two that are kind of right in the middle. We're in the middle of the demilitarized zone, like right in you know, shooting range. So we're standing there, and uh, um, they, they, they come out, <clears throat> and they're all like cocky, and this short little fat guy walks out, and he's got a little uh, megaphone speaker thing. He's got a microphone. He goes, and he points at the protesters. He goes, citizens of Memphis, we are the white knights of the... <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck, Melvin? And then Melvin's like, it broke. And he's like, well, what's wrong with it? He's like, battery's dead. He's like, well, where's the battery? He's like, I forgot. I'm like... You fucking guys drove from North Carolina to like fight the power. All you do is rally. That's the only thing you know how to do. Rally and, you know, government aid. And like you, all you show up with is one fucking battery. And so they start chanting. And um, I, it sounds like they're saying like the thing on your car that makes rain come off of it. They're like, wow. Purr, wah, purr. And the only people that can hear it are me and Zayd. And they're going, wah, purr, wah, purr. And as they're chanting and screaming, it's like God takes this little, uh, takes a pillow and it just slowly starts to rain. And it's like, wah, purr, wah, purr, wah, purr. And I'm standing eight feet in front of them. And even the guys from CNN are like, what the fuck are they saying? I'm like, I can't hear what they're saying. And they're like, so they sit there and for 30 minutes they leave. It rains. No one hears them. And that was when the Ku Klux Klan came to take over the great city of Memphis. <laughs>